Wow. 1010. Grab my phone to record about this thought that was in my head about Father. <sighs> Knowing, Father, I have so much in me, so much you put in me, and so much you've caused me to understand about my life and like why things are the way that they are. And like how when I was growing up, <laughs> I couldn't, I was wowed, very, very wowed, very wowed and uncontrollable, okay, rebellious, um, outspoken, bold, dramatic, um, capture of attention, like, bruh, and I'm not saying this to get some kind of praise, look, I've had hate my whole life, okay? All I've ever wanted was love. And all I've ever expressed is love. I never really hated anybody. I don't hate anybody. I don't... I mean, I do dislike some people that, you know... Don't keep the laws of the Father, okay? Because they're making life miserable for me. So it's hard for me to like somebody that's making life miserable for me and for others that want to be free to worship and serve our almighty power, you know, like, and, and to, to live our lives and be free. What's so wrong with that, bro? Like, why do everybody feel like they got the need? Why do a lot of people feel like they got the need and the, and the right to put people in a box and force people to think a certain way. Force people to act a certain way. Force people to believe what you want them to believe. Bruh, I'm sick of this oppressive ass dictatorship of a system. They force everything upon us. Everything. The creator, the most high, the giver of life. He doesn't force anything upon us we have the right to freely choose him if we want to or we have the right to follow this world and all of our fleshly desires because majority of this world is literally following their flesh and their carnal mind they not they're not even thinking they're not even nowhere near trying to think on the spiritual level they're all thinking in the, in the carnal reptilian brain. And I'm not trying to put nobody down. I'm not trying to insult nobody. But this is what I see in my day-to-day -day reality. But yet I'm looked at as crazy. I'm looked at, I'm, I've been an outcast my whole life. I have never been accepted by anyone except for these one white boys, but I, I don't really truly know how they truly felt about me. You know, I don't, I mean, they treated me with, with respect and with love. They show love to me. Okay. So on the surface level, they show love to me. They, they could have chose to reject me, but they took me and this is this group of white boys. Okay. I used to kick it with them. Now I'm not telling you that each and every one of them was, you know, wholeheartedly, you know, loved me or wholeheartedly respected me, but they, it, it seemed like for the most part, they all accepted me and they all treated me with dignity and respect. This is a group of white boys. Like how many times do I got to say it? Okay, I was not accepted by my own people growing up in the hood. I was always ridiculed. I was always picked on. They looked down upon me. See, somebody like me, you know, being born female, but having all the characteristics of a male. Um, that didn't go over well at all. Growing up in my neighborhood and in my schools, it, it was something looked down upon, and I was not doing it on purpose. I just was different, and people could not accept that. 
Therefore, I was not accepted in high school or grade school. There was no such thing as middle school. I was surprised that there was no such thing as middle school in Chicago, on the south side of Chicago where I grew up. Um, we moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, before I turned 16. I think I was either 14 or 15 years old. Now, I don't remember. I was either 14 or 15, though. Uh, when we moved here to Oklahoma, this was after my mother and my uncle both had a vision that I would not make it to the age of 16. Had we not moved out of Chicago to Oklahoma, okay, we literally packed up within a week and moved to Oklahoma. Now, my mama didn't know nothing about no Oklahoma. Me and my brother, we never heard nothing about no Oklahoma. We were thinking and talking like, is they going to have like horse and buggies there? Like we had no clue. But we knew that our uncle, um, my uncle Kelvin, he was already in Oklahoma because he went to Broken Arrow, um, Rhema Bible Institute. Okay, that's where he chose to go um, to become a pastor. So my uncle and aunt were in Oklahoma, but they were in Broken Arrow. But the father told my mother to move to Tulsa. And she didn't know nobody in Tulsa. Um... But to make a long story short, because I didn't even mean to get off on this, we move here. And, um, bruh, I did everything within my flesh. Because I didn't know no better. Okay? So I just followed my carnal desires and I did what thou wilt. Whatever I wanted to do, I did it. Okay? I was very wild, very aggressive. I've always been aggressive. Um, in your face, confrontational. Um, and I had to learn um, to control my emotions because I, I, I've always been very explosive. So now that the Father has taught me patience, Love, it started with him teaching me how to love myself, okay? Because I had to first learn to love myself and care for myself in order for me to love other people and other beings and care for them. You will have no clue how to do this if you don't first love yourself, okay? Well, first love the Most High because, and the reason why I love him I'm going to explain why I love him, okay? Because he gave me life. And um, the type of life that he desired for me is not the life that I lived, okay? Now, the life that I lived is a combination of my wicked forefathers and my own mistakes that we've made, okay? That I've made. My, my wicked forefathers that put this curse upon their children and their children's children, okay? The Father has caused me to understand um, the reason why my life was the way that it was. And it started with loving myself. Let's, what started with loving Him, then Him teaching me how to love myself, and then teaching me how to love others, Okay? And now I understand that I can't love others and just, you know, attack them. So I've, I've learned patience and compassion, mercy, okay? Kindness, goodness. I've also learned 
do unto others what you will want done unto you. So I wouldn't want somebody to just come out yelling at me. So why am I going to do that to somebody else? So I'm now I'm conscious. I'm conscious about how I talk to people. And um, it really is a good thing that I've calmed down. Because I was on the fast track to doing something completely stupid. Hell... I did in 2021 freaking wreck my damn car being stupid because of being a hothead. Um, but uh, the father has calmed me down tremendously. And, and he's taught me by way of the leading of the spirit. How this, how how we can be at peace, and in harmony, and in oneness with Him, and the Messiah, who came to teach us these simplistic things. Okay, people want to make the Father and the Messiah out to be mysterious. You know, like can't really understand the Bible. There's a reason why they made it like that, bruh. Do you truly believe that the Bible is the absolute word of God? <laughs> like, why? Bruh. Why would he do that? Why? <laughs> why would the creator of all life put all his essence in one book that was Forced upon the whole world by the way of the sword. <laughs> Please explain to me how a loving power, how and why a loving power would do that. Okay. The, the power of life and love. Why would he do that? So if somebody was born blind and deaf. And mute, just say that they were just born that way. They can't read, they can't hear, they can't they can't do anything, okay? Are they automatically damned to hell? Because they don't got the Bible. Because that, that's truly his his essence right there. That, that's his true word. And if if you never read the Bible, then you damned to hell. Cause how else can you get to know the Creator? You got to read it in this book. Why is people sending me attachments, bro? I really don't like that. And, you know, I've asked repeatedly, repeatedly, I asked in kindness, okay, to please not send attachments to my inbox, right? Please use your own wall to post things. And if you want to get my attention, tag me in it. Okay, but please don't send things to my inbox because that is highly annoying. All right, my messenger, my inbox is for conversations, not for people to continuously send me links and or videos, attachments, okay? Because I'm never going to click on them. Unless I ask for something. So it's a waste of time to do that. All it does is kind of irritate me because I don't want my messenger used for that. Like, don't, because I go check my messenger when I hear it going off, thinking that someone's talking to me. And I get in there and it's just an attachment. That's annoying to stop what I'm doing to go see if someone's talking to me. And it's just an attachment. Like, bruh, you could have posted that to your wall and uh, tagged me in it. 
You know, and I can choose whether I want to watch it or not. But please, stop sending me attachments to my, to my inbox. Now, and it happens so often, I mean, to the point to where it's like, bruh, <laughs> because I, I've been asking this for years, literally for years, I've, I've been saying this, but yet the same people and even new ones, like they feel like the need to send things to my inbox, like, please use your wall. Like, you don't post to your wall, you're posting to my inbox. My inbox is not your wall. Like, if you feel the need to share something, that's what you have a wall for. And then if you want to draw someone's attention to it, then that's what the tag is for. The inbox is for conversations. Not for you to flood me with information that you should post to your wall. Okay, moving on from that. Now, as I was stating, this is a process, okay? Uh, salvation is not instantaneous. I find myself asking, why did I even pick up my phone? Because these things are not planned. Like these things that is in my spirit that the father wants me to talk about so that it can help people progress. It is a good thing that he has calmed me down and has gave me several gifts for an outlet. Okay. He's gave me a mouthpiece. That's one of the gifts he's given me, along with has completely filled me up with his word and knowledge of him, the truth, the creator, okay? Not the God of the Bible, because that's not the creator. The deity of the Bible is not the creator. Now, many would say I'm blaspheming at this point. But hear me out. Why do you have such a small mind? And that's not an insult. It's the absolute truth. Because you truly believe that you can place the almighty creator inside of a box and say that the Bible is his essence. This is his word. Like as if his word is not within us. As if someone born deaf and blind, you know, as if they cannot know right from wrong within them. As if they don't have his spirit within them. The only thing that makes his spirit go away is you polluting your temple, knowingly or unknowingly. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go by the leading of the spirit and give you a little bit of knowledge here, okay? So that hopefully it will break shackles and chains off of you. <sighs> Second. I, I was not planning on this, but we're going to go ahead and get this right here. Not really sure what book this is in. It doesn't matter. It lines up with what the Father said in the beginning. Okay? It should not matter where the source is at. It should not matter what the vessel that's speaking it, that the Spirit of Truth is flowing through. It should not matter what they look like. Okay? 
You people want to focus on trivial physical things when the spiritual is way outside of that, okay? So you want to stay in the physical. You want to put the Most High Creator in the box. You want to put him in the box uh, in the category of the Bible being his infallible word, okay? Let me read this to you. And like I said, I don't know what book this is This is from, okay? Um, but is chapter, or no, verse, yes, yeah, verse 187. I don't even know what chapter. It doesn't matter. Verse 187. We're starting. Yeah, the demons found that they could pierce the light shield of creatures who fell from the fleshless diet to a diet of flesh. And once they entered the light of them, behold, they could enter even the physical body of the unsuspecting host. And by entering the body of a host, lo, the demons gain two things. One, they may now whisper in the mind of their host. Two, they may experience vicarious thrills through the sense organs of their host. Okay. I also perceive the remedy for this great evil, a return to the fleshless diet. For once a being rejects the flesh diet of the demons, the demons are forced to flee. Yeah, the demons are forced to flee because according to Yahuwah, according to the Creator, according to the eternal law, they cannot be within the light of them. All right? Let that sink in. Demons are not how they are portrayed by Hollywood. Manifested demons, terror tumor parasites, these things grow eyes and teeth, okay? And they live inside your body. All parasites, okay, are manifested demons within your body. People are walking around demon possessed and have no idea, okay? In just a second, because we ain't done. We is not done. All right, let me go ahead and get this, and I'm not sure what book this is from either. It doesn't matter, as well as it doesn't matter the vessel that's bringing it forth, okay? Because it ain't about me, and it's not about the title of the book. It's about the words that I am about to read to you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start at the beginning where I, where I freaking got it. This is verse 28, not sure what chapter, not sure what book. Neither would these young souls knowingly worship Lucifer in Satan rather than the Most High Creator. Therefore, Lucifer would pretend that he was God. He would call himself Yahuwah and tell them that he was their creator. He would establish the priesthood of the serpent on this world, which is the satanic priesthood of the dark path. Lucifer communed with his master, Satan, and behold, the voice of the serpent spoke within Lucifer, saying, Let my priest mix good with evil. For it is in the robes of good that I shall dress my seeds. And only one thing, only one thing is truly needful to enslave mankind. He must be made to eat the flesh of animals. For then we can enter his body and enjoy his senses. Yeah, and we can whisper in his head. And he will believe that our words are his own thoughts. 
No matter if his scriptures declare love one another, as long as he eats flesh, he will be unable to follow those words. And yet, because we mix those good words into his scripture, our religion of blood sacrifice is made more palatable to the young souls we wish to ensnare. Let that sink in. All right. Give me just a moment. Now, this this got to the point to where men were already ensnared, right? So now, men were already ensnared by the demons, okay? The demons that had entered their bodies, okay, via the parasites. So now the parasites then took over, took over their mind, okay? And now they're... Conscious is seared with a hot arm against the father and now they begin to hate the father and they begin to hate all things good okay and so now evil has taken over okay evil is taken over and now they enforce it all right they enforce it now this is this is why they started rising up against the prophets okay all the prophets at the most high will rise up and speak through that willing vessel okay eventually they ended up being murdered eventually they ended up being killed because of the words because of the word of the father the word of the creator that said love the most high love him with all your heart soul and body and then love your neighbor as you do yourself okay treat each other the way you will want to be treated do not unto others things that you would not want done unto you these are the words that all the prophets spoke unto their fellow humans fellow human beings okay as these other human beings they wanted to murder the creation they wanted to follow their own ways they wanted to keep their traditions this is the way we cover our sins we take an innocent animal here and we slit his throat and we spill the blood all over the altar and now we're washed clean this is their own way this was never the father's way the father never commanded animal sacrifice we can prove that with jeremiah 7 22. I never commanded your forefathers the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt. I spoke not to your fathers and nor commanded them the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and or sacrifices. If the father is saying through Jeremiah that he did not command no animal sacrifices nor burnt offerings where did it come from where did it come from it came from wicked perverse men now we're going to God's book of Ezra okay this may be in the Owaspi Bible, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, so let's go ahead and read Doctrines of Yashu and his death. I'm going to read what I can see here, okay? Because that's what the Father's leading me to do. All right, I'm not even sure what chapter that is. It's uh, XLIV have no idea all right the most I said these were my doctrines as I taught through Yashu and I'm like I'm trying to figure out who Yashu is but I'm thinking that that is the Messiah okay um and I had never read all of this before okay um the most I said these were my doctrines as I taught through Yashu Thou shalt keep the Ten Commandments of Moses. Thou shalt not engage in war. 
nor a bet ward. Thou shalt eat no flesh of any animal, or fish, or bird, or fowl, or creeping thing, which the Creator created alive. Gave them the breath of life, bruh. Just like you got the breath of life. He commanded thou shalt not kill, okay? He said thou shalt eat no flesh of any animal, or fish, or bird, or fowl, or creeping thing, which the Creator created alive. Thou shalt dwell in families after the manner of the ancient Israelites who held all things in common. Thou shalt have no king, nor queen, nor bow down in worship to any save thy creator. Thou shalt not call on the name of angels to worship them, nor to counsel with them on the affairs of earth. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, and do unto thy fellow man as thou wouldst have him do unto thee. Thou shalt return good for evil, and pity to them that sin. It has been said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but I say return good for evil, and if a man smite thee on one cheek, turn the other unto him also. The man shall have but one wife, and the woman but one husband. As the children honor the father, so will the family be blessed with peace and plenty. Remember that all things are of the Creator, and ye are His servants to help one another. And as much as ye do these services unto one another, so ye serve the Creator. Behold, only the virtues and wisdom in thy neighbor, his faults thou shalt not discover. His matters are with his creator. Call not on the same name of any power or Lord in worship, but worship the creator only. And when thou prayest, let it be after this manner. The Most High Power who ruleth in heaven and earth, hallowed be thy name, and reverent amongst men, sufficient unto me as my bread, and as much as I forgive those that trespass against me, so make thou me steadfast to shun temptation, for all honor and glory are thine, worlds without end. To visit the sick, and distressed, the helpless and blind, to relieve them, to provide for the widow and orphan, and keep thyself unspotted before men. These are the way of redemption. Thou shalt take no part in the governments of men, but observe the will of the Creator, being obedient unto all governments for his sake. Now, Thou shalt take no part in governments of men, but observe the will of the Creator. That means you cannot do that and be obedient to all governments for His sake, okay? So, th that right there, that's a contradiction in this little paragraph here, alright? So, this government... Can this government is wicked as hell? All right, so you can't tell me that we're supposed to be obedient to this evil abomination upon the earth. All right, I'm obedient to the Creator. All men are the children of one Father, who is the Creator, the Giver of life. And whosoever chooses him and keepeth his commandments is his chosen. Now we know that in these days, there ain't many people at all upon the face of the earth that literally 
wants to keep his commandments that are literally doing everything in their power to keep his eternal law of love, compassion, mercy, empathy, patience, kindness, goodness, all of the fruits of the spirit, bruh. Look around at the world today and tell me how many people are walking in the fruits of the spirit. Most people are walking after their carnal flesh. To preserve the seed of his chosen, thou shalt not wed, but with the chosen. Contend not with any man for opinion's sake, nor for any earthly thing. Let thy speech be for others joy, or open not thy mouth, if thy words will give pain. Hmm. Well, the truth hurts. So sometimes there needs to be a little bit of pain, but it's not in it's not it's not to hurt you. It's to free you. So therefore be considerate of thy speech. I try to be. I do try to be teaching others by gentleness and love to be respectful toward all men. Now, I'm not out here cussing people out. But I may come across bold and authoritative, and that's that's literally the spirit. Now, th there's other records that will declare that it is the spirit. Because it ain't me the way that I bring about these presentations. Sometimes it is very gen gentle. Sometimes it's very gentle and, 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 you know, whatnot. But for the most part, that's how your pastors speak, okay? Your pastors bring about with, like, you know, with the, this gentleness and, and this supposed love, okay? But I'm coming across to you genuine. All right? This is all genuine. I don't practice this. I didn't plan this. Preserve the sacred days of the rabbis and the rites and ceremonies of the, I can't even pronounce that word. For three years, Yahshu traveled among the Israelites, preaching and restoring the ancient doctrines. This must be the Messiah. And see, the people, this is, this is what, this is like where bruise like really get themselves into trouble. It's because like, bruh. You know that the Messiah came to the earth. I'm talking to the ones that know about the Messiah, okay? They they, they say that they believe in the Messiah, all right? All right? I'm talking about the bruise that say they believe in the Messiah, all right? Now, you can read in the New Testament how the Messiah was constantly correcting these Pharisees, these religious leaders, put it that way, okay? He was constantly correcting these religious leaders that claimed to keep the law of Moses, all right? He was con why would he have to correct them if the law of Moses was absolutely 100% the word of God? Why would the Messiah have to correct them? Why would the Messiah have to say that the Sabbath day was created for us, not us for the Sabbath? Why would the Messiah have to correct them about divorcing their wives and how he told them that in the beginning he created male and female and commanded them to be one? You know, how can you sit here and call yourself getting multiple wives and say that you're keeping the law of Moses when the Messiah came to correct them on that foolishness? When the Messiah came to correct them on the doctrine of divorcing your wives? Okay, the Messiah corrected them on many, many issues, but they were self-righteous in and of themselves. They wanted to follow after their own ways. They wanted to keep their own traditions, okay? So much to the point, they're asking for a sign. Well, we need a sign. How do we know that you're the son of God? And they hated him, okay? They hated the Messiah just like they all hated the prophets, okay? They hated the prophets. This is why they murdered them, all right? This is why the Messiah said, if you even get angry with your brother, you have committed the sin of murder. Why? Because anger leads to hatred, and hatred leads to murder, okay? Now, this is simple. This is very, very simple. It cannot be any more plainer than this. Okay? 
They hated the prophets because he spoke the true word of the creator of life, the creator of love, the giver of life. Okay. The Messiah came here and he did that. He corrected these, these Pharisees, these religious leaders that thought that they were keeping the law of Moses that you want to keep today in the 20s. In the 21st, whatever century we are in, we're in the we're in the half of half of times, people. Okay, we're in the last half of times. This is all prophecy. What I'm doing right here is prophecy. Okay, it was prophesied that he will wake up his people in the land of their captivity and bring to our remembrance of who we are. He will cause us to speak his words. Okay, there are some of us that he has rose up to speak these things in the ears of those who have the ears to hear, the heart to receive, and the eyes to see, so that they can have the shackles and chains broken off of them so that they can be spared the destruction that is coming upon the earth okay understand that the earth is about to go through a purging all right there is a purging coming upon the earth this earth is about to be purged of wickedness all right because wickedness has reached a high heaven the gentiles have had yeah, they had all this time okay They've had all this time to build up their atrocities, all right? The Israelites got punished right away. We did not get to build up our wickedness, okay? We get punished right away for judgment and chastisement begins at the house of the Most High, okay? We have been going through our chastisement. We have been going through our tribulation, okay? We have went through Jacob's trouble and all of these things. The so-called black man, black woman, so-called black people have been downtrodden this whole freaking time and you other nations have been blinded to it you see it but you can't see it you see it you know we never got reparations we never got repaired as a people you want to tell us to forget our history our true history forget how we've been broken as a people been broken as a nation forget the fact that we have been plastered to the world as nothing is as the scum of the earth as nobody's but the father said that he was going to raise us up the father said that the tail shall become the head and the head will become the tail yeah everything is about to go back the way that it was we became the tail for a reason people but we're not going to stay the tail okay he is overturning that right now. The earth is going through a shifting. It is going through changes. This purging is coming about whether you want to see it or not. Whether you realize it or not. It's here. Already. Judgment is here upon you other nations and still upon my people that are rebellious and stiff necked. Oh, it was a whole bunch of you. The spirit of the Pharisees is upon the earth today. In these last days, <coughs> the children, the children of the Pharisees, them same wicked entities are upon the earth today. They hate the Most High. They hate themselves. Because if they truly love themselves, they wouldn't be feasting upon dead corpse. They would not be, bruh, <laughs> like you're asleep. You're literally a walking zombie. Because you cannot understand something as simplistic as eating a corpse cannot bring any kind of nutrition to your body. You are a living being. You are energy. You are electricity. But you want to feast on a rotting corpse and think that that is healthy. Clearly you are sleeping. Clearly you are spiritually dead. And this is not an insult. This is absolute truth. You want to feast on a corpse. It is a 
a dead body that has been murdered. The breath of life was snuffed out of that living being. The creator, the giver of life, created that being. He gave that being the breath of life. He desired for that being to live a happy and fulfilling life. Yet it was stolen from that being. Also, you can feast on his corpse. And you think that you serve the giver of life. Well, I'm sorry to be the one to bust your bubble, to break that mental delusion. But you can't serve the giver of life and partake of death. You cannot serve two masters. You either serve the giver of life or you serve the God of death and destruction. There is no in between. And we read before on how they mix good with evil in your scriptures. So this is why you are confused. Now hold on, let me get back to this book, okay? For three years, Yahshu traveled amongst the Israelites, preaching and restoring the ancient doctrines. And there were gathered in groups of tens and twenties and fifties, and more than two thousand Israelites of the ancient order of Moses, who became steadfast followers of the teachings of the Messiah. But because of persecution by the apostate Jews, quote-unquote, the Jews, quote unquote. Now, many of these were Edomites, all right? Edomites, and there were a couple of the, the tribe of Judah that were with them, okay? They called themselves the, the priest, okay? The priest and those that did the sacrifices and all of that. Uh, these men that set themselves up in authority over the people, okay? And were the giver of laws and all of these things. And they put people under bondage, these people, okay? They kept themselves aloof from the world, having signs and passwords whereby they knew one another, okay? This was a secret group, okay? They, they, they uh, had ways of communicating with each other, kind of like, kind of like your, uh, Masons, okay, your Freemasons, your Illuminati, your your freaking government, you, the, the, these uh, secret societies, okay? First, the god Baal, and after him Thoth, inspired the kings and rulers against these faithists. Okay, so you get you get all of these um, evil entities, the fallen angels. Okay, the fallen ones. All right, they're upon the earth too. All right, so you get good and evil upon the earth. You get you get those that rebelled against the father. Okay, the the, the entities that rebelled against the father. War against those that love the Father, okay? You got good and evil. There is no in-between. The Creator is not both good and evil, okay? See, you have been taught that through Christianity. You've been taught that through your Bible. This is why you can't separate contradictions. In the, you, can't, you can't even spot the contradictions in the Bible. You think that it is the infallible Word of God, my bro, how in the hell can it be the infallible word of God when you can read a clear, concise contradiction in Leviticus 7:37 through 38? This is the law of burnt offering, of the meat offering, and of the sin offering, and of the trespass offering, and of the consecrations, and of the sacrifice, of the peace offerings, which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their oblations unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. All right, so it says that in Leviticus 737 through 38, okay? You want to believe that that's the infallible word of God, all right? But in Jeremiah 722 
through 24, for I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices, but this thing I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your power, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Now, are you really going to sit there and proclaim that that is not an outright contradiction? Are you seriously going to sit there and proclaim that I am misinterpreting scripture? One verse says, that the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai concerning the burnt offerings and sacrifices. That's what it says in Leviticus. But in Jeremiah, it's saying, I spake not to your fathers concerning burnt offerings and or sacrifices. Which one is lying? Because they cannot both be telling the truth. Now you can sit there and try to philosophize all you want. But the scripture declare in Genesis 129 what our diet was supposed to be. And in Genesis 130 what the animal's diet was supposed to be, which was the same. The things that grow from the earth. Never once did the creator call the animals meat. He called both our meat and the animals meat that which grows from the earth. But now you got a polluted, perverse mindset that truly believes that animals are meat. That never came from the creator. The lying pen of the scribes put that in your Bible. Okay? Jeremiah 8.8 8 tells us, How do you say that we are wise and the law of the Most High is with us when lo, certainly in vain, made he it? The pen of the scribes is in vain. They teaching you for doctrines of men. This is why the Messiah had to send the spirit to the earth to lead and guide us by the set apart spirit of truth. In order to have the blinders removed from your eyes, people, you must first humble yourself like that of a child. Didn't the Messiah to say, didn't he say to come like a little child? When you humble yourself like a child, you don't have a mindset full of preconceived ideologies of men. No, you are humble like a child, able to receive, able to be taught. The, the spirit of truth cannot teach you when you're holding on to doctrines that you have been taught by men. Only when you humble yourself like a child will the father begin to melt your stony heart and replace it with a heart of compassion and love and understanding. The heavenly father will reveal many things to you once you choose to seek him diligently. It's never on the surface, people. Truth is never going to be right on the surface. You must dig deep for truth because it has been hidden and suppressed. Now, they mock the truth to your face, okay? They mock the truth to your face, right to your face. They put it blatantly in front of you. But it's, a, it's in a mocking type of manner, and you don't even catch it. You don't even grasp it. Because you're under all these spells. But yet I'm crazy. Yet, yet you want to call me crazy. All right. Now. And they proved them by commanding them to eat flesh. Okay. These Pharisees. These enemies of the creator of life. The giver of life. They proved them by commanding them to eat flesh. Even swine's flesh, the which, if they refused, was testimony sufficient before the laws to convict them of being enemies against the gods. What gods? 
the evil powers that are against the creator, the giver of life. So they were scourged and put to death whenever found. This is what happened during the Inquisition, people. Okay? They were burning us alive at the stake, all right? They've been hanging us in trees, okay? They've been merciless against us. Now it came to pass that Yahoo, the Messiah, went into Jerusalem to, to preach. He went into Jerusalem to preach. And in not many days thereafter, he was accused of preaching the Creator. And he was arrested. And whilst being carried to prison, he said, Ye are hypocrites and blasphemers. Ye practice none of the commandments, but all the evils of Satan. Behold, the temple shall be rent in twain, and ye shall become vagabonds on the earth. And at that, the multitude cast stones upon him and killed him. And the Messiah sent a chariot of fire and bore his soul to paradise. Now, see, I'll, I'll, I've never read this before, right? So there's all these different accounts of how the Messiah was murdered. But nevertheless, they murdered him, okay? Now, they did not murder him themselves, all right? They actually gave him over to the Romans, to a stranger, to murder him. Because according to their traditions and their laws, they, they could murder. And they, they were wanting to keep themselves pure for the Passover. Okay? So they kept their traditions and their ways and all of these things. But they definitely wanted front row seats to see his murder. So that they could not deny that it, it, that it was done, basically. For want to know that it was, that it was carried out. To know that, that he, was, he was dead. Okay? They hated him that much. Okay? And they hated all his people because they took care of the disciples as well. All right. And then they began to force it upon people. This is what happened in the Inquisition. All right. And during the Inquisition, it was forced on people. Flesh eating was forced. It got to the point to where you couldn't even be a part of the church unless you consume the flesh of animals. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to keep this. All right. I'm not I'm not going to keep this long. Let me see, just a second, I don't know if I want to read all that, bro, because that's a lot, because this is already long, and I think I've, I think I've made my point, because it, Yeah, I think I'm going to stop it there. This is long enough. So, um, shalom.